Mount Rainier is waking up, or is it? A shocking 542 earthquakes have rocked the area in a sudden swarm of seismic activity, raising alarms across the Pacific Northwest. Could these relentless tremors be a warning sign of an impending volcanic eruption? Or is this just a natural shift in the Earth's crust? What exactly is causing this surge in earthquakes beneath one of America's most dangerous volcanoes? How prepared are we if Mount Rainier erupts? And what would that mean for millions of people living nearby? Could this be the calm before a catastrophic storm? Mount Rainier, the majestic sentinel of Washington State, stands as a geological masterpiece and an ever-present reminder of the dynamic forces shaping our Earth. Towering at an awe-inspiring height of 14,411 feet, 4,392 meters, it is not only the tallest peak in the Cascade Range, but also boasts a prominence of 13,211 feet, 4,027 meters, making it the most topographically prominent mountain in the contiguous United States. This striking prominence ensures that Mount Rainier dwarfs its volcanic neighbors, including Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, and Mount Hood, asserting its dominance both in height and visual impact. Mount St. Helens, famous for its catastrophic 1980 eruption, stands at a height of 8,366 feet, 2,550 meters, following the collapse of its summit during the eruption, with a prominence of 4,606 feet, 1,404 meters. Though dramatically reshaped, it remains an iconic volcano known for its explosive activity. Mount Adams, the second highest peak in the Cascade Range, reaches 12,276 feet, 3,742 meters, with a prominence of 8,116 feet, 2,474 meters, presenting a broad and massive profile compared to Rainier's sharper, more defined silhouette. Mount Hood, the tallest mountain in Oregon, rises to 11,240 feet, 3,426 meters, with a prominence of 7,706 feet, 2,349 meters, and is renowned for its elegant conical shape and status as a beloved landmark for the region. Mount Rainier's physical presence is both commanding and intricate. It hosts 25 named glaciers, the most of any peak in the contiguous United States, making it a vital source of fresh water for the surrounding region. Its rugged slopes are cloaked in dense conifer forests at lower elevations, which give way to alpine meadows dotted with vibrant wildflowers as the altitude increases. The mountain's summit is crowned by a series of craters formed by past eruptions, with Columbia Crest standing as the highest point. Beneath this tranquil exterior lies an intricate web of magma chambers and vents, a stark reminder of the volcano's fiery origins. Geologically, Mount Rainier is classified as a stratovolcano, also known as a composite volcano, characterized by its layered structure of lava flows, volcanic ash, and fragmented rock. These layers were built over hundreds of thousands of years, with the volcano's current form estimated to have begun taking shape around 500,000 years ago. Its Volcanic Explosivity Index, VEI, a measure of the magnitude of volcanic eruptions generally ranges from two to four, signifying eruptions that can range from moderate to cataclysmic. While Rainier's eruptions are not as frequent as those of some other volcanoes, their potential impact is immense, particularly due to the surrounding population and infrastructure. Throughout its history, Mount Rainier has experienced numerous significant eruptions. One of the most catastrophic events associated with Mount Rainier, the Osceola Mudflow, occurred approximately 5,600 years ago. During this event, a massive portion of the volcano's northeastern flank collapsed in a volcanic landslide, debris avalanche, likely triggered by an eruption. The collapse sent a torrent of mud and debris cascading down the valleys, covering an area of over 212 square miles, 550 square kilometers. The mud flow reached as far as the present-day Puget Sound lowlands, where it buried parts of the landscape under thick deposits. 
Next is the Electron Mud Flow, is one of Mount Rainier's more recent and notable events, occurring about 500 years ago. This lahar, originating on the west flank of the volcano, flowed down the Puyallup River Valley. Although smaller than the Osceola mud flow, it traveled over 30 miles, 48 kilometers, and impacted areas now heavily populated, including parts of the modern-day cities of Orting and Puyallup. The electron mud flow was likely triggered by a combination of volcanic activity and melting ice. Also, several eruptions occurred during the Holocene Epoch, approximately 2,200 to 1,000 years ago. These eruptions produced pyroclastic flows, lava flows, and volcanic ash. One significant event during this period involved the emplacement of the Mount Rainier lava flows, which reshaped portions of the summit and flanks. These eruptions contributed to the volcano's modern structure and demonstrate its capability to generate a variety of volcanic hazards. During the late Pleistocene, Mount Rainier experienced a series of eruptions that contributed to its current stratovolcano shape. These eruptions produced extensive lava flows, pyroclastic material, and tephra deposits. One of the notable products from this period is the Stevens Ridge lava flow, which helped build the volcano's eastern flank. The triggers of Mount Rainier's eruptions are deeply tied to its location along the Pacific Ring of Fire, a tectonic boundary known for its intense seismic and volcanic activity. Rainier owes its existence to the subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the North American Plate, a process that generates the heat and pressure necessary to produce magma. This tectonic interaction, occurring along the Cascadia subduction zone, is a significant source of seismic activity and a potential catalyst for future eruptions. Earthquakes along this fault line could destabilize the magma chambers or trigger landslides, setting off volcanic activity. At the beginning of this year, 10 earthquakes have already rocked the base of Mount Rainier, subtle yet powerful reminders of the restless forces beneath this iconic peak. In 2024 alone, Mount Rainier recorded 542 earthquakes, subtle echoes of the dynamic processes that have shaped this region for millennia. This is not an anomaly, but part of an ongoing trend, with 662 earthquakes in 2023, 501 in 2022, and 452 in 2023, 2021. These numbers reveal a steady hum of activity beneath the surface, a geophysical symphony playing out in the shadows of one of North America's most iconic peaks. By contrast, in the year 2000, the mountain registered only 201 earthquakes, a stark reminder of the growing awareness and monitoring capabilities that now illuminate its hidden workings. The seismic story of Mount Rainier is punctuated by significant events, such as the magnitude 4.5 earthquake on Saturday, October 7, 2006. Occurring at 7.48 p.m. local time, this quake was not only the largest since 2000, but also a window into the forces at work beneath the mountain. With a depth of just one mile, this shallow earthquake rippled through the surrounding region, a potent reminder of the mountain's potential to stir from its slumber. Though not accompanied by volcanic activity, the quake underscored the proximity of immense geological forces and the fine balance that keeps them at bay. Mount Rainier's potential for destruction lies not in rivers of molten lava, which would likely travel only a short distance beyond the park's boundaries in the Pacific Northwest, nor in clouds of volcanic ash, which prevailing winds would most likely carry eastward away from populated areas. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the true danger arises from the possibility of a lahar, a fast-moving torrent of water, volcanic debris, and sediment. This deadly slurry forms when an eruption rapidly melts snow and ice, triggering flows that cascade through valleys and river channels, accumulating debris along the way. Standing as one of the tallest and most glaciated peaks in the contiguous United States, Mount Rainier's icy mantle makes it particularly perilous in the event of volcanic activity. The height and extensive ice cover of Mount Rainier mean that any eruption could unleash immense quantities of water, melting the snow and ice almost instantaneously," noted Seth Moran, 
a research seismologist at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. The consequences could be devastating for the tens or even hundreds of thousands of residents living in areas along the potential Lahar pathways. These flows, traveling at incredible speeds, leave little time for evacuation and could result in catastrophic loss of life and property. The deadly force of Lahars has been tragically demonstrated in history. In November 1985, Colombia's Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted, and within hours, a torrent of mud, rocks, and icy water engulfed the town of Armero. The disaster claimed over 23,000 lives in mere minutes. The hardened slurry, akin to concrete, trapped countless victims. When the flow settles, it becomes almost impenetrable, behaving like quicksand for anyone caught within it, explained Bradley Pitcher, a volcanologist and lecturer at Columbia University, during an episode of CNN's Violent Earth. Mount Rainier poses an even greater threat than Nevado del Ruiz. With approximately eight times the volume of glaciers and snow, the potential for catastrophic mudflows looms ominously. In the U.S. Geological Survey's most recent threat assessment, conducted in 2018, Hawaii's Kalauea ranked as the most hazardous U.S. volcano, largely due to its frequent eruptions and proximity to populated areas. Mount St. Helens, infamous for its cataclysmic 1980 eruption, was ranked second. Following closely behind was Mount Rainier, a silent colossus whose potential for devastation remains among the most concerning in the nation. Lahars, destructive flows of volcanic debris and water, often emerge during eruptions, but can also be triggered by landslides and earthquakes. Geological evidence reveals that Mount Rainier has produced at least 11 major lahars over the past 6,000 years, many of which extended into the Puget Lowlands. Notably, the most recent significant event, which occurred approximately 500 years ago, appears to have been unconnected to volcanic activity. Instead, researchers suggest it was likely caused by a massive landslide on the mountain's western flank. This instability persists today, with loose, weakened rock still present in the area. Such precarious conditions heighten the concern among volcanologists about the possibility of another spontaneous, landslide-triggered lahar. The unpredictable nature of this threat, combined with the knowledge that Mount Rainier remains capable of generating a similar event, underscores the ever-present danger. Should a lahar of comparable magnitude occur, it could reach nearby communities in as little as 10 minutes and larger population centers within an hour, alarmingly short windows for response. Recent simulations have attempted to quantify the potential impact of such an event. One modeled scenario envisioned a lahar originating on Mount Rainier's west side, releasing 260 million cubic meters of debris, enough to fill over 104,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Traveling at a speed of about 13 feet per second, this massive flow could reach the town of Orting, Washington, within an hour, causing widespread devastation. In contemplating Mount Rainier, one cannot ignore the interplay of awe and unease it inspires. It is a place of unparalleled beauty, where nature thrives in the shadow of a geological giant. Yet, it also embodies the raw power of the earth, a force that has shaped and reshaped the landscape for millennia. For scientists, Mount Rainier is both a marvel and a mystery, offering insights into volcanic processes while posing a constant challenge in predicting its next move. The people living in the vicinity of Mount Rainier carry the weight of its presence, balancing the rewards of life near this natural wonder with the risks it entails. Communities rely on early warning systems, hazard maps, and emergency preparedness plans to mitigate potential impacts. Meanwhile, the mountain stands as a silent guardian, its peak shrouded in clouds or gleaming under the sun, a symbol of resilience and a reminder of the delicate equilibrium between humanity and nature. Finally, let's find out if the eruption of Mount Rainier could trigger other volcanoes in the Cascade Range. The eruption of Mount Rainier is unlikely to directly trigger the eruption of other volcanoes in the Cascade Range. 
While these volcanoes share a common origin in the tectonic processes of the Cascadia subduction zone, their eruptions are governed by distinct, localized geological mechanisms. Each volcano operates as an independent system, with its own magma chamber, plumbing network, and pressure dynamics responding individually to the forces driving volcanism in the region. Despite this shared tectonic origin, each volcano is characterized by its unique plumbing system and eruptive history. These differences arise from variations in magma composition, crustal structure, and localized stress fields. For example, Mount Rainier's magma contains more silica than that of many other Cascade volcanoes, leading to higher viscosity which affects the buildup of pressure and eruption style. At the heart of each cascade volcano lies a magma chamber, a reservoir of molten rock beneath the surface. The dynamics within this chamber are critical to determining whether and when an eruption occurs. The size, shape, and depth of the magma chamber vary significantly among cascade volcanoes, influencing their eruptive behavior. For instance, Mount Rainier's magma chamber is thought to be deeper and less connected to the surface than that of Mount St. Helens, which may partly explain the differences in their eruption frequency and style. The crust surrounding each volcano plays a key role in determining how magma moves toward the surface. These stress patterns are unique to each volcano and can evolve over time, influenced by seismic activity, subsurface magma movements, or even glacial loading and unloading, a significant factor for Mount Rainier given its extensive glaciers. Volcanic gases, including water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide, are critical drivers of eruptions. As magma ascends, the pressure decreases, allowing these gases to come out of solution and expand, much like the release of gas bubbles in a shaken soda bottle. The buildup of gas pressure within a volcano's plumbing system can trigger explosive eruptions particularly in volcanoes with viscous, silica-rich magma, like Mount Rainier. While direct triggering of an eruption at another Cascade volcano is highly unlikely, indirect effects are possible. Volcanic eruptions can generate seismic waves that propagate through the crust, potentially destabilizing nearby faults or magma reservoirs. For instance, large eruptions like the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens are often accompanied by intense seismic activity, which can alter the stress field in the surrounding crust and potentially influence magma movement at nearby volcanoes. Additionally, changes in crustal stress caused by an eruption can affect hydrothermal systems, which play a role in volcanic unrest. Increased fluid movement within these systems, triggered by seismic disturbances, could lead to localized pressure changes in a magma system. However, such indirect interactions are exceedingly rare and would typically require unique circumstances, such as another volcano already being in a state of heightened unrest or near the threshold of an eruption. Thanks for watching, and remember, Mount Rainier is one of the most closely monitored volcanoes in the world, with experts keeping a vigilant eye on every rumble and shift. While 542 earthquake swarms might sound alarming, it's a reminder of the dynamic forces at work beneath this majestic peak. What do you think? Could this increased activity be a precursor to something bigger? Or is it just Mount Rainier letting off some steam? Have you ever experienced an earthquake or wondered what it would be like living near a volcano like this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for more updates on seismic activity, volcanic events, and the ever-changing story of our planet. Stay curious, stay informed, and as always, stay safe.